Hello, my name is Todd and welcome to my open heart surgery recovery vlog series. If you're new to the series, please check out the first one in the in the series. If you want, you can get some background on the surgery and why I needed to have it. Um, if you've been following along, thanks a lot for the support. I really appreciate it. And I got a couple more videos to go, I think. Um, so the last few videos I uh, used to document my stay in the hospital. Um, and today I'll be talking about being at home. Um, the time of this video, it's been about a little over three weeks since I've had the surgery and almost uh, almost three weeks since I've been home. Um, I left the hospital with a bunch of folders of instructions and information which talked about things like medications. And we talked about that in the last video. Um, today we'll talk about the restrictions I've had since I was home, what they told me I could and could not do when I was uh, recovering. So uh, the big thing was not being able to carry more than five or 10 pounds, basically like a gallon of milk. That's about as much as I can carry around while everything tries to heal up. Um, I can't raise my elbows above my shoulders. So it makes it difficult when I take a shower. I kind of have to bend over and bend my head down and, and kind of work like this. So it, it makes it a little tough, but um, it, it's all right. I can't, I can't really reach behind my back and scratch it or, or, or anything like that or stretch. Um, anything that's going to put stress on the sternotomy incision. Um, I can't sprint or get in a foot race with anybody, obviously, while well, I kind of get back up to speed. Um, but I'm supposed to be walking four times a day, and the goal is to walk outside a couple times and then take stairs a couple times, and each walk to be about eight minutes with the idea to gently increase it to a point where I'm finally doing one walk, which is about 30 minutes a day. And I've been doing that really well. I've been doing a good job walking around. I really like walking outside. It's been pretty nice around here in the, in the DC area, the DMV. So um, the stairs are kind of a pain in the butt, but I'm, I'm usually averaging about like 18 minutes already on walks. I'm still trying to do like at least three a day. So we're getting close to that, uh, that one walk of 30 minutes. And, and ideally I'll, I'll do beyond that because I want to, like I said in an earlier video, get to like a healthier lifestyle anyway. Um, I'm supposed to take breaks, like a 20 minute break. I break all day. I mean, if I'm not walking, I mean, I'm usually in front of the videos or in front of the camera making a video or I'm, you know, on the couch watching a movie or, or a sports thing, you know, lots of sports stuff going on this time of year. Um, there's no real diet restrictions for me. I'm pretty much supposed to eat whatever I want, um, but heavy on protein, heavy on vitamin C uh, to kind of, you know, it's, keep this the healing process as fast as possible um, one of the the there is a, a small limit if it, I'm supposed to kind of watch the sodium intake only because it creates you know uh, water retention and that's kind of difficult on the ticker so um, I don't really eat a lot of salt as it is so it's it's not that difficult for me to kind of keep that out of my diet um, I'm not supposed to do any housework you know can't use the vacuum cleaner can't clean the bathroom. It's so bad. I feel so horrible. <laughs> I can't do the stuff I hate doing anyway. But um, no, I've done. I mean, I've done some stuff like dusting the table and when I, you know, visitors coming over. But I'm not supposed to do any hardcore stuff. Um, I'm not supposed to be driving, which is okay. I mean, I don't really feel like going out and doing anything crazy anyway. And the one that really stinks is that I'm not allowed to use deodorant or powder or lotion or anything like that. It's just basically soap and water when I shower and I can't put anything on. That's why I'm wearing, you know, toques all the time in these last couple of videos when you see me because it, uh, it's, I feel pretty nasty. I, I really don't like that. Any, as long as the wounds, you know, the surgery, the incision wounds are still open and obviously some of them are the, the chest tubes will take at least a couple more weeks. I'm not supposed to use any of those kind of things because when I take a shower, it could run down and cause irritation or you know, increase the likelihood of infection. At least that's what they, they told me, so. I'll just grin and bear that part as I get through it. Um, the first few days when I was home, uh, I was basically moving with the speed of a garden slug. You know, everything's in slow motion as you're trying to, you know, gauge how you're doing, walking around, you know, getting used to your home environment again. Um, and, you know, the, I was taking the pain medicines religiously but the really difficult part uh, when you get home is sleeping through the night. 
I would I would go to bed. I'd have a pain pill before I go to bed. I'm taking oxycodone or oxycodone, um, and it works really well. I mean, like in 20 minutes, you feel better. But I take one usually about 10 or so before I went to bed, and then I go to sleep. And then halfway through, I wake up, and I in the first couple of days at home, I'd be shaking because I'd be really in a lot of pain. So it was difficult to kind of figure out how to get through that, and I basically just start keeping. You know, like a big iced tea jug by my by my bed with a pain pill ready to go. So if I woke up in the middle of the night and I'm shaking and I'm really sore, I just pop a pill and that would get me through to the morning. Um, it took a while to kind of figure out that that was probably the best way to do it because uh, I mean it's it's difficult and you want to be able to sleep, but it's really hard to you know get into bed and get comfortable and, and I'm a side sleeper and I kind of I think I I uh, I roll over a lot when I usually sleep, so I couldn't do that. Um, and I'm still kind of figuring that part out too, because I'll wake up and my, my side will be like uh, falling asleep because I've been laying in the same position. And I'm trying, I have to be careful how I roll over. I don't want to, I can't push myself away. I have to kind of, like I said, chicken wing my way around or rotate the hips and kind of get over. So it takes a little while to do that. And I'm still not used to that part, even today. Um, let's see, the, I've been doing the washing as I was, as I was instructed, you know, the shower bit where you, you wash everything first and then you go and you take individual washcloths for each each wound, each uh, incision site, you clean that off. The first couple days was a bitch. It's, it takes forever. It's like a 40 minute shower to get everything done because you're sore and you're not really flexible so you have to kind of figure out how to do stuff while still like you know keeping your elbows down and it feels weird because your skin's kind of numb from the nerves being cut and it's just takes time to kind of get used get into a rhythm. So it took a while to get through that. Um, now it takes about 20 minutes to kind of get through the shower, which is fine, but it, it, it's it's like, geez, man, I got to take a shower. It's a 40 minute commitment. You want to be doing other stuff, but um, it's only for a few days and then you kind of get, in a, get into a rhythm. And that's a really important thing too I want to mention was getting into a routine was probably the most difficult thing to do that first week when I got home. I mean, you know, Determining how you're going to wake up, you know, get food, walk around, getting into a routine and a rhythm. And they say this in the end when they recommend how you're going to recover because, you know, when you're in a, a routine, it makes everything kind of go into to like a clockwork, like I know a circadian rhythm kind of thing. And you just, it makes it easier for your recovery. And, and plus, you, I mean, you look forward to the next step of what you're going to do for the day. Um, it kind of gets you ready for when you're going to be back in the world. Um, so that's, that was the most difficult thing. And the, so the first week, while I was trying to figure my shit out, I just basically told all my friends and family, "Don't please don't come. I still got to get my stuff together, get my poop in a group, and kind of figure out how my rhythm is um, and my, my routine. Um, within a couple days, I had a nurse come to my uh, apartment and start checking up with me. And she would come every three or four days to see me. So she came like, I don't know, three or four times, maybe five, I don't know, to check me out, see how I was doing. I think she was used to a lot of older patients, um, but uh, she, because she seemed always blown away by how fast I was recovering, and I, I it was getting, I've been getting that a lot, you know, how fast my recovery is. You know, I, I look pretty well. The hardest part at this point is, you know, getting up out of a chair. If I'm like lean back in the sofa or on the lounger or something like that, it takes kind of a while to kind of get up to, you know, stay a straight up position to sit, and then kind of get up. But once I'm walking around and everything, I'm, I'm good to go. Um, so she came over for a couple times. She was fine. She was really nice. Uh, I had a physical therapist come out once to kind of see if he could help me, you know, with any of my um, my physical activities. Just do an assessment. And he's he was really nice. He said, you know what? It'd be a waste of your time if I came out here. You're doing so so well, you know, walking around and everything. It it I don't see any need for me to be here. If you if you need help with something, give me a call. So he came out one time. I haven't seen him since. I probably will never see that that dude again. Um, let's see, after about two weeks, I started having uh, doctor's appointments, and the day before, the, the, this with the surgeon, and then my heart, my cardiologist, who's actually my regular doctor also, so that's always pretty cool, he's a really great guy, and so the first appointment was the, the surgeon's office, and I was basically just checking in with a nurse practitioner, and um, the day before I had to get, or the day of, I went and got an x-ray done, they wanted me to do that, I guess, I'm pretty sure it's to check to make sure there's no fluid buildup in the lungs, so did all that, and then 
I had all these questions I wanted to ask, but I was just so nervous just going to the to see the doctor that first time. I didn't ask any of the questions, basically. She said, everything looks good. I said, do I need to see you in the surgeon's office anymore? She said, nope, unless you have some issues with the, the incisions, but you're good to go. So the next day I had the, the appointment with my regular doctor, the, the cardiologist, and I went through all my questions with him. He was really great, he answered all my questions. He was happy to see me. Um, super cool guy. So. I got a couple follow-ups with him I have to do. Um, leading up to those two doctor's appointments, I was running out of pain pills. So the last two or three days before the doctor's appointments, I started having to ration uh, the pills uh, for the times I really needed it, like in the morning and then right before bed and, and maybe one during the day. So I was taking three instead of four or five. And that was a real bummer. I, I realized that um, as good as I felt all up until that point, a lot of that was reliant on the pain medication. Um, when I stopped taking the pain medication, trying to ration it out, stop taking the pain medication, uh, I started getting really sore, and then just you don't feel like doing a whole lot. You know, you don't feel like doing the exercise. You don't want to get up really because you're, cause you're just kind of not feeling so hot. Um, so I felt kind of bummed out about that. You know, I, I I really thought I was actually making good progress and my body was healing really fast, but a lot of it was pain medication. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I was and have been healing extremely quickly, but um, it was a little, a little more uh, attributed to pain medication than I thought in, a, in that initial step. So when I went to see the surgeon's office, she gave me another prescription for about another week's worth of pain meds. I got those now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point now where I'm kind of weaning myself off. Like I said, I was doing about four or five pills of this oxycodone stuff a day, and now about two, you know, one, a little after I get up and then one before I go to bed and that's been working out pretty well. Um, I've been sleeping through the night but in the morning, morning's a bitch man. I, I wake up and I'm, I'm pretty sore and I'm really stiff and I think it's attributed not so much to pain uh, due to the surgery but it's it's more of related to uh, a previous injury I had in my shoulder. I, I heard it playing softball several years ago and also that I'm stationary a lot of the time. Um, so I'm sitting around, so my back gets stiff, everything kind of gets sore, I'm not really moving around a whole lot. I mean, I'm doing all the prescribed walking and everything, but it's not the same as, you know, you're going out to work or hanging out with your friends or, you know, you go shopping and stuff. I don't do any of that stuff. I don't, I don't really get out, not yet at least. It's going to take a little bit longer. But So I think most of the pain maybe, or maybe is, is attributed to that because after I wake up, and I'm not popping a pain pill or anything, I'm just kind of, walking around and doing my my daily vitals which you know I, I have to do um, and it's just, I start to feel a little better because I think I'm working the stiffness out um, and I say the daily vitals what I have to do is I, every day I still have to weigh myself to see if I'm gaining weight really fast for fluid buildup I'm taking my temperature um, see if I have a fever I'm also got my little you know heartbeat or my heart rate cuff and blood pressure cuff take those readings and just keeping a track of them the next time I see the doctors. Um, so in about a week or two I can start driving and I think uh, it's kind of take these kind of these next couple you know stepping stones for the recovery it's kind of a wait and see type thing how we do um, but in about two weeks I'll go and get a, a flu and pneumonia vaccines in preparation for getting back to work you know it's almost flu season um, so I gotta protect myself because I'll be really um, susceptible to some, some some of those bugs, so I've had flu shots before. Now, I don't remember the last time I had a pneumonia vaccine, but I've had flu shots before. I had the flu earlier this year because I mi I missed my flu shot and I, I just caught it and it kicked my ass. So um, I'm religious about that kind of thing. So I'm walking really well, um, but I need to take it easy. And this is another kind of thing they told us in the hospital that you'll feel really good. Um, but don't overdo it. There was a point about last week where my midday kind of stairs walk, I felt so good. I was like, screw this, man. I'm taking four flights of stairs in a row. <laughs> so I did four flights of stairs and I got kind of woozy. I mean, I wasn't going to black out, but I, I definitely felt it. And I got back to the apartment. I was sweaty and it was really tiring to sit down and stuff. And my mom flipped a bitch. She's like, you're not doing that again. <laughs> Anytime I do the stair thing, she gets nervous, but um, rightfully so, because I was an idiot. So it's it's important to kind of, you know, 
listen to the body and, and do things uh, as it says it should. So um, at this point, it's time for my folks to kind of get back to their lives a little bit. And they have a couple dogs that are, are like children, they're like my brothers, basically, um, in, in my parents' eyes. So I want them to be able to get back to the, the animals. So I'm going to go stay with them in their places uh, starting this weekend. My family owns like a little cottage, just like a little fishing shack that we own down on, on Chesapeake Bay. Um, so we're going to go up to Baltimore and kind of pick the dogs up and then head down this weekend to the cottage. And it'll be nice to be by the water, you know, we're, we're, we're right on, the, you know, we have like a little rock wall that the water hits and it's nice down there and the neighbors are all cool and stuff. So it'll be a good place to kind of continue my convalescence. Um, I'll try to take some videos while I'm down there and upload them when I get back. We don't have really any internet access, so it'll be at least another week before I put another video up. Um, and the final thing is, the last couple of weeks, I mean, I've had a, an amazing amount of visitors, you know, family members, uh, friends from work, friends that I just, just know, uh, my, uh, my old roommate and some buddies I know through him. Some of my old college roommates came up and, and watched football with me and my family over the, the weekend. That was just awesome, man. They were, this is just a lot of really supportive people coming by, calling. I got some family members coming tonight. It'll be great. I had a buddy of mine who was... He's also kind of out uh, injured from a rugby injury he had. He, he came over yesterday to kind of hang out with me for a while, which, I mean, to make the drive to see how I'm doing, um, just amazing. So I really pre appreciate all that support. So uh, next video will come up probably in, in, a, in about a week and a half when I get back from the cottage. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm getting better and better. Uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing to get back to the regular uh, usual lifestyle. So uh, thanks for stopping by and uh, keeping up with me and uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right, see you later.